So let's get to um, well, what's happening on the immigration front. Of course, you know, the immigration is becoming, I don't know, it's probably become. I mean, when you contemplate uh, the idea that Donald Trump launched his campaign by saying that uh, Mexico is sending a bunch of rapists over here, I'm sure some of them are okay people. And, you know, hopefully we can put to rest, and, and, and this should have been done a long time ago, but John Kelly, who is, uh, are we okay on sound over there? John Kelly, he is the White House uh, POS, I think they refer to him, and um, he was explaining What's going on with the Dreamers? Now, as you know, under the program initiated under the Obama administration, about 690,000 Dreamers refer, uh, received deferred treatment status. In other words, look, we don't have the resources as a country to go after 11 million people who are here without documentation, proper documentation. Therefore, we're going to make a prosecutorial discretion decision. We are not going to come after these groups of people. If you are in that group of people, rather than have you not be able to get a job, have you not be able to do this, we want you to come into the system so that we're aware of you and we can keep track of you but you'll be able to work, be productive citizens. We're going to issue a special Social Security card, all of it. That was what the DACA program was. Here is John Kelly explaining uh, why Donald Trump is offering more uh, than 690,000 people the opportunity to, to receive a permanent status in this country and simultaneously exhibiting how much of a racist he is. Audio, so you're going to hear from uh, General John Kelly. I want you to listen. Pause it for one second. He is not a general. He used to be a general. He's not a general. Right now, he is the chief of staff, or the POS, I think they call him audio so you're going to hear from uh, general john kelly want you to listen and then we're going to talk about it on the other side there are 690,000 official daca uh registrants and uh the president uh, sent over what amounts to be two and a half times that number to 1.8 million the difference between 690 and 1.8 million were the people that some would say were too afraid to sign up others would say were too lazy to get off their asses, but they didn't sign up. Um, so the president, uh, shockingly, said, okay, 1.8 million, and then probably the biggest shock was uh, in, in a path to citizenship. All right, so um, uh, contrary to um, this uh, bigot's perspective that there were the 9 million people too lazy to get off their ass, the fact is, is that only 1.3 million of that 1.8 were even eligible for DACA last year. Eligibility requirements are rather strict. They have to do with how long you've been in the country. So some people haven't aged into it yet. You have to uh, finish a certain amount of school. And they haven't aged into that yet. So now we're talking about closer to five or 600,000 people as to why they didn't sign up. And Kelly is probably correct that a significant number of these people were too afraid to do so. Because here's a possible scenario you are facing as someone who was brought to this country as a child, as an infant, as a two-year-old, as a seven-year-old, as a nine-year-old. And now it's 10, 15 years later. You have no familiarity with that country that you came from. You speak English just like your classmates do. 
You can go and sign up. Let the government know where you live. Go in for your regular meetings. But what happens if Barack Obama is no longer president? What happens if, say, the next president turns out to be a racist piece of crap? What happens if that president decides that he's going to start rounding up people like you? What happens if that president decides to use you as a political tool and not renew your status? Seem far-fetched? I bet you there's a lot of those people right now who are quite happy that they did not sign up for that status. Not to mention, it costs hundreds of dollars. 500 to apply, 500 to renew every two years. What is the justification for that? Uh, Does it take that much labor to process each application? One third of the people eligible for DACA lived in families with incomes below the federal poverty line. So the idea of paying $500, maybe there's a couple of kids. That's just way, just way impossible. Um, so it's possible that there are some people who are just too lazy to get off their asses to sign up. Uh, but it's much more likely that other uh, reasons are, are why people who fall into that broad category of dreamers but don't necessarily fall into DACA eligible would not have signed up. And for most of those reasons, uh, they're looking pretty smart and prescient now. 